Welcome to Professionalism and Customer Service in the Healthcare Environment, Regulatory Issues, HIPAA, and Standard Precautions. Many of the issues in professionalism and customer service that we have discussed are common to a variety of work settings, but there are several regulatory issues that are unique to working in a healthcare environment. In this unit, we explore two areas where there are specific guidelines for individuals working in healthcare settings. The first, standard precautions, are guidelines for preventing infection, and the second, HIPAA rules, are aimed at ensuring the privacy and security of patient health information. The objectives for regulatory issues, HIPAA and standard precautions, are to characterize the importance of and guidelines associated with infection control, describe ways of protecting yourself and others by employing standard precautions, and describe the implications of HIPAA on communication. Infection control is a serious patient safety issue in healthcare organizations and requires an effective infection control program. The goal of infection control is to prevent infections from being spread within the healthcare setting. At this point, you may be thinking, I work in IT, not directly with patients, so this doesn't apply to me, right? However, this isn't the case. The spread of infection may also occur after indirect contact with the patient's environment, such as through a computer or a medication scanner that was in a patient's room. Following infection control guidelines can help to protect you from infections that others might have. Perhaps even more important, following these guidelines will protect patients from getting infections from you. Spread of infection is referred to as cross-contamination. When you're working in a healthcare setting, such as a hospital or clinic, it's important to understand that patients are often more vulnerable to infection than healthy people and will have more serious consequences if they do become infected. An infection contracted by a patient in the hospital during the normal course of medical treatment is considered to be a healthcare associated infection or an HAI. HAIs are taken very seriously by healthcare organizations for several reasons. First, HAIs have a negative impact on patients, their medical conditions, and their outcomes. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC, quote, in 2014, results of a project known as the HAI Prevalence Survey were published. The survey described the burden of HAIs in U.S. hospitals and reported that in 2011, there were an estimated 722,000 HAIs in U.S. acute care hospitals. Additionally, about 75,000 patients with HAIs died during their hospitalizations, end quote. Second, HAIs have a negative financial impact on the healthcare organization. Payers, such as the Centers for Medicaid and Medicare, or CMS, will not reimburse hospitals for the additional costs of caring for a patient with an HAI. HAIs are deemed the fault and responsibility of the organization. If proper procedures and protocols for infection control were observed, these events would not occur. Since the costs must be absorbed by the healthcare organization, you can imagine that healthcare organizations are extremely motivated to reduce this type of risk. The prevalence of HAIs is also a quality measure for healthcare organizations. To receive payment from CMS, hospitals are required to report data about specific infections. The aim of public data reporting is to make healthcare safer. Numerous HAIs can adversely affect the healthcare organization's ability to gain or maintain regulatory approval. So, as you can see, HAIs are a serious issue. Standard precautions are the basic set of infection control measures to be used to protect yourself and others from the dangers of infection transmission. Standard precautions encompass several areas within the healthcare organization. Policies outline the infection control measures utilized to promote a safe climate. For example, as a condition of employment, all employees, not just those in patient care areas, may be required to complete an annual training on standard precautions and hand hygiene. Hand hygiene is a major component of standard precautions. The use of personal protective equipment, called PPE, such as gloves, gowns, and facial protection is another component. Also included is the appropriate cleaning of the environment and patient care equipment and appropriate waste disposal. The most effective means of controlling infection in the healthcare setting has been shown to be proper hand hygiene, which equates to frequent hand washing with alcohol-based gel or soap and water. 
using the proper techniques ensures that you're cleansing your hands of bacteria and preventing the spread of germs or cross-contamination. Hand hygiene must be performed before and after eating, before and after using the restroom, before and after being in patient care areas, before and after handling equipment from patient care areas, such as computers, medication scanners, and mobile devices, and when returning to your organization after being off-site. When it comes to hand hygiene, too much is better than not enough. The CDC provides guidelines for proper hand hygiene using soap and water. Quote, wet your hands with clean, running, warm water, turn off the tap, and apply soap. Lather your hands by rubbing them together with the soap. Be sure to lather the backs of your hands, between your fingers, under your nails, rings, and jewelry. Scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds. Need a timer? Hum the happy birthday song from beginning to end twice. Rinse your hands well under clean running water. Dry your hands using a clean towel and dispose of the towel in an appropriate bin. End quote. How to perform proper hand hygiene using an alcohol-based hand sanitizer rub or gel. Apply the gel to the palm of one hand. Use enough of the product to wet all surfaces of both hands. Rub hands together until they are dry. Be sure to rub over all surfaces of both hands and fingers. Do not wash hands after using an alcohol gel. This step is not necessary or recommended. As stated earlier, standard precautions are the core of infection control. They form the backbone for avoiding HAIs and protecting you, patients, and others in the healthcare environment. While you're in patient care areas, any and all human body fluids you may encounter should be treated as if they are infected. Pay close attention to signage that indicates isolation precautions are in effect for particular rooms or areas. For instance, if a patient has vomited in a hallway, alert the staff rather than trying to clean up yourself. If you've made contact with any human body fluids, tell the staff right away and follow their directions. While these sorts of exposures will be rare, it's important for you to know how to handle them in a safe manner. Another important part of being a professional in the healthcare environment is for you to understand HIPAA, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. The HIPAA Privacy and Security Rules are a set of federal regulations put forth by the Department of Health and Human Services, or DHHS, under the authority of the HIPAA statute, which was signed into law in 1996. It includes measures covering both privacy and security. According to DHHS, quote, a major goal of the privacy rule is to assure that individuals' health information is properly protected while allowing the flow of health information needed to provide and promote high-quality health care and to protect the public's health and well-being, end quote. It impacts professional communications because it contains regulations that protect the privacy of patient data. The privacy rule applies to individually identifiable data. It mandates that information about specific patients can be shared only with those who need to know it to do their jobs. For example, a nurse needs to be able to review a patient's medications and other orders when she or he comes on the unit. However, nurses don't need to know information about any patients other than their own. PHI is Protected Health Information and is any individually identifiable health information collected or created as a consequence of the provision of health care in any form, including verbal communication with a staff member. There are 18 specific data elements that comprise HIPAA privacy rule identifiers. These include, but are not limited to, names, phone numbers, email addresses, social security numbers, and medical record numbers. Under the privacy rule, before any information can be shared, for example, as part of a research project, these data elements must be de-identified to protect the individual's privacy. The security rule sets national standards for data security to protect individuals' electronic personal health information that is created, received, used, or maintained by a covered entity. Details on which entities must comply with HIPAA is covered in other instructional components. These rules must be followed by healthcare organizations and healthcare providers who share individually identifiable patient information electronically, and the rules specify who can access patient information, how security breaches are managed, the development of disaster recovery plans, 
and physical safeguards for the computer hardware. The breach notification rule of the High Tech Act of 2009 requires those covered by HIPAA to notify individuals affected by a breach of protected healthcare information once the breach is discovered. In addition, the Secretary of DHHS must be notified, and in the case of breaches affecting more than 500 individuals, the media must be notified as well. The rule specifies the means of notification, such as email or first-class mail. It also specifies that notification must be made without reasonable delay and within 60 days in cases of 500 individuals or more. There are several additional important components of the HIPAA legislation that you need to be aware of. Violating HIPAA can result in civil and criminal charges being brought against a person and an organization. The penalties can result in fines and possible imprisonment. As you conduct your professional duties, you'll at times see or discuss specific patient data. It's crucial that you understand this data is not to be shared outside the parameters of your work environment or with those who are not authorized. The intent of HIPAA, in addition to protecting patient privacy, is to give patients some degree of control over who can and who can't see their medical information. HIPAA is not intended to impede communications and the necessary flow of information in healthcare. Communications related to payment or other healthcare operations don't violate the privacy rule. For example, a staff member calling out a patient's name in a clinic waiting room doesn't violate the privacy rule. With patient privacy in mind, let's talk about a few guidelines. Following these guidelines will help you avoid violating HIPAA regulations. The first is that any patient information you learn about in the hospital or clinic stays there. It's not appropriate to discuss patient information with friends or family outside your workplace. For example, don't tell your best friend that her boss has just been admitted to the hospital for cancer surgery. Don't tell your neighbor that you saw his daughter in the emergency room. It's important at all times to keep patient information confidential and to realize that this includes the spoken word in addition to what appears in medical records. HIPAA also requires that patient information be shared only with those who need to know in order to perform their professional responsibilities. As part of the HIPAA data security requirements, strict auditing of patient information access is enforced. Don't be tempted to access information from your own medical records or those of friends or family members. Always be aware of what you're saying, who you're saying it to, where you are, and who might be able to overhear your conversation. Because organizations face stiff financial penalties for HIPAA violations, they take violations very seriously. Consequences for violating HIPAA rules might include losing your job and possibly criminal charges as well. This concludes regulatory issues, HIPAA, and standard precautions. Remember that as a professional in the healthcare environment, you must follow protocols for infection control and adhere to all regulations governing communication and the sharing of patient information. To review, Remember that infection control is everyone's responsibility. Hand hygiene should be a regular part of your professional grooming to help prevent the spread of disease-causing bacteria. Frequent hand hygiene will help protect you, your coworkers, patients, and the organization from the risk of infection. Be sure that you're aware of and clearly understand your organization's specific policies on HIPAA and how those apply to your professional role. Never give your computer access codes to anyone for any reason. Be sure to log off your computer when stepping away from it. Be sure to remove as much personally identifying information as possible from patient data that you are using to resolve IT problems. HIPAA requires that healthcare organizations comply with protections for patient privacy and data security. Violations can result in being fired, fines to the organization, closure of the organization, and even imprisonment for some individuals. By being attentive to the HIPAA requirements, you not only show respect for patients, but also protect yourself and your organization. Please note that HIPAA regulations are covered in more depth in other instructional components.